Number 20, letter A. It is difficult to extinguish a fire on a crude oil tanker because each liter of crude oil releases 2.8 times 10 to the 7 joules of energy when burned. To illustrate this difficulty, calculate the number of liters of water that must be expended to absorb the energy released by burning one liter of crude oil if the water has its temperature raised from 20 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, it then boils and the resulting steam is raised to 300 degrees Celsius. All right, so if you had to think of the main principle, the main concept behind this problem, what would you think it is? It's conservation of energy, right? So hopefully you said that. Now it's conservation of energy, right? The most important, I probably slowed down also when I was reading it, right? Um, right here, you know, basically this, this part right here is probably the most important part of the problem. All right, it's telling us that whatever energy is released from one liter of crude oil, here's a certain volume, it's one liter, right? And it's telling us then that this volume of crude oil is going to release this amount of heat energy. And this amount of heat energy then must be absorbed by the water. All right, so it's a simple conservation of energy problem. So basically, I can say that the, the heat energy of the crude oil had to equal the heat energy then of the water, right? In other words, the heat energy lost by the crude oil had to be then absorbed by the water. Okay, very simple, right? Now, we know this value, okay? Right, I mean, it's right here, simple. So we know actually then the amount of energy, heat energy that was absorbed by the water then, right? I mean, according to this equation. So really the key part now is if I know this, then the question becomes, well, how do I get to somehow the leaders, right? How do I somehow make that connection? All right, first, before we make that connection, what type of heat energy transfers are involved in this particular part of the problem, meaning when water is raised, when its temperature is raised from 20 degrees to 100, then it boils, and then the steam is raised to 300. What does the heat transfer look like? Well, when I say heat transfer look like, I'm trying to, I'm thinking about how do we calculate that, okay? So remember, I've done this before. There's three phases of matter, solid, liquid, gas, right? The melting point is between the solid and liquid phase, or the freezing point, you can call it. Right, the boiling point or the condensation point is going to be from liquid to gas or gas to liquid. So you know these values, right? The freezing point basically is zero degrees Celsius for water. Boiling, it is 100 degrees Celsius, okay? So in terms of your continuum here, where are we starting the problem for heat energy transfer? Well, we're starting at 20 degrees Celsius. So it looks like right about here, right? 20 degrees Celsius. And then what's going to happen is this thing, this water is going to increase its temperature all the way to 300 degrees Celsius. Now, how many steps are there to this calculation? Well, there's three unique steps, okay? And that's why this, this continuum helps. First, we have to think about raising the temperature of liquid water from 20 degrees Celsius all the way to 100 degrees Celsius. That's just the liquid water part. That's one part of the problem. The next part, once you get to this little kind of roadblock here, uh, the next part is to think about, well, now, since we are indeed, right, continuing uh, to increase the uh, temperature of this, of this water, the next part is to talk about the energy required to change phase of that amount of water. And then... The last part is going to be to talk about to raise the temperature of this, the resulting steam now from 100 degrees Celsius all the way to 300 degrees Celsius. So there's really three parts, there's really three parts to this Q, okay? So in other words, I can expand on that, right? The total amount of heat absorbed by the water, wouldn't it be reasonable to say it would just be the summation of this yellow part plus then this blue part plus then this red part? I think so. So now we can just simply say this. That is going to be, I'll call it um, the Q that the liquid water absorbed, right? The heat energy that the liquid water absorbed, plus then the heat energy of, I'm just going to call it P for phase change, plus the heat energy for the phase change, plus then the 
heat energy absorbed by the steam. And it's just those three parts that I labeled up there. So now what I can do, right, is that now I can expand on each of these with my formulas. The reason why you cannot do that initially is because you have several different uh, several different phases of matter and phase changes occurring in this total Q, right? As I detailed up here, you have to look at each part independently, okay? There was another problem I did in the chapter. It was a five-stepper where I used this uh, uh, diagram. I highly suggest you take a look at that because if you can do I forgot the number, but if you can do that uh, problem, you should be have no problem. Actually, you should have done it already, right? You should be doing every problem in the book, all right, if you really want that good grade. So, um, and not even for the good grade, if you really want to learn physics, it's actually quite interesting and it, it kind of sheds a lot of light on a lot of, uh, uh, let's just say misconceptions out there in the world. Okay. So, uh, here, let's now expand on each of these. So now I'm going to use, when we're talking about heat energy changes of a particular state of matter, right? The heat energy, the energy absorption here for just liquid water. I use this formula over here on the right-hand side. It says that the mass then of the object that I'm heating up multiplied by the specific heat of the liquid water. Okay. So I'll, I'll put all little liquid symbols down here, then multiplied by the cha change in temperature of that liquid water. Okay. Plus then, now this is the ener heat energy associated with the phase change. That is a slightly different formula. Okay, that's going to be talking about the mass of the item that has changed phase. So we'll just say the mass. Basically, and this is the key insight to the problem, this mass, though, would basically be the same as this mass, right? Because we're talking about all of the liquid water being converted into steam, right? So all of this, all, all of this mass right here is going to be the same, then, as the mass required for the calculation in this part. So I'm just going to write, though, M sub P for now, the mass that's involved in the phase change, all right, multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization. Plus then, again, this is now the heat energy associated with a specific phase, uh, excuse me, a specific, um, I don't even know what I just said. So let me start that again. This Q is associated with the heat energy gained by simply steam and only steam. So that means I can use this formula over here. So it's the mass of the steam multiplied by the specific heat of the steam multiplied by the change in temperature of the steam. Now, when you do it this way, I know this looks complicated, but if you look, it this forces you now to think about all the different specific heats that might be involved, the different latent heats of vaporization, right? It 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 by expanding on this, we see that the problem is a little more complex than we might have imagined initially, but it's not hard. We're just expanding on each part, all right? And it also tells you that we're probably going to need some different constants along the way. So the key insight now to the next step is this, that whatever mass, whatever, as I was mentioning before, whatever mass of liquid we started with underwent a phase change, and then that mass also then increased its temperature from 100 degrees Celsius to 300 degrees Celsius. So these M's are all the same. They're all the same. So I can now rewrite this as just M for now, okay? T change in temperature then of the liquid plus then the mass times the latent heat of vaporization plus then the specific heat um, then multiplied of steam multiplied where where the mass go? I don't know. I'm thinking ahead. So mass of the steam, uh, mass of the steam, well, ma just mass, oh my goodness, multiplied by specific heat of the steam. If your brain's twisted, so is mine. So don't worry, we're in the same boat. Uh, now what I can do is I realize that each of these three terms has a common factor, right? And what can I do mathematically? I can pull that out. So why don't we do that? So we have Q sub C now. Remember this represented the heat energy uh, lost by the oil. So now it's going to be M multiplied then by C sub L delta T sub L plus then LV plus then C sub S, delta T sub S. All right, and now if you wanted to find the mass, right, what do we have to do? We just have to divide this on out, okay? To save some space, I'm just gonna plug in the numbers now and then I'm gonna do my division. But you can see now, all I would have to do is basically take this, actually, you know what I'll do? I'm just gonna reorganize this. So now what we're gonna do is now all I have to simply do is divide, oops, divide this whole thing from this side and then also divide it 
on that side, right? So I'm simply going to just reorganize this slightly. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring it on down. Let's move this on over. Let's move this on over. Let's move this on over. Move things up slightly. And then we'll just move this. And look, voila, there it is. Okay, so now all I have to literally, I know everything now. Now you might be saying, well, how do I know I need the specific heat of, of steam? I mean, well, you know it because we figured that out, but you know, it's not given in the problem. So you might say, well, I can't use that piece of information. Well, if you don't use that piece of information, this is not solvable. I mean, it's just, it's that simple. It's just not solvable. So usually though, when you don't know certain constants, specific heats, right, densities, heats of vaporization, heats of fusion, blah, 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 you're usually then, you can, you can look those up, all right? Those are, um, you know, either on the test you'll be given them, hopefully, or you might have to memorize certain values, which I, I hope that's not the case for you, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, so let's start plugging in the values. The heat uh, lost by the oil, they told us was going to be uh, 2.8 times 10 to the seventh, divided now by the specific heat of the liquid water, which is, again, that's four, about 4184. I keep using that. I think your book uses 4186, whatever, but it changes as the temperature actually changes, so that's why the numbers are slightly different. So don't go nuts in case it's slightly different. Uh, temperature change of the water. So the water, remember, we said it went from 20 to 100, so the final temperature was 100. The initial was 20. Great. Plus then the latent heat of vaporization, which is right here. That's also another constant. Be careful though. This is in kilojoules, right? See that? But every other value here in terms of specific heats are in joules, right? So you got to convert this into joules. You better be consistent. So that's simply going to be 2 million, you know, just multiply that by 1,000. So that's going to be 2,256,000 and then add three zeros. Last but not least, the specific heat of steam. So that's now about 1520 joules per uh, kilogram Celsius. So this is going to be 1520, 1520, multiplied by then the temperature change of the steam. So the steam went from then 100 degrees, that's when steam starts, right? And then they went to 300. So it's going to be 300 minus then 100. And that's then going to equal now the mass. And I know you're saying, well, they wanted the liters. I know, I know. We're almost there. We're almost there, all right? We are almost there. I'm crying along with you on this one. So, all right. So 2.8 times 10 to the 7th, and then we're going to divide by this whole um, lovely stuff at the bottom. 4184 multiplied by 80, and then plus then 2256000, plus then 1520 multiplied by 200. And we get 9.67 or so, right? So this is about 9.67 uh, kilograms, okay? 9.67 kilograms of water. All right, so that sounds good. Now, that being the answer, okay, why don't we now identify, so now that we know the mass of water, how do we figure out then the volume of water? Well, again, we're gonna need to know another uh, constant here, right? The density of water. We need to know the density. I wrote it down there at the bottom. So I'm going to erase all this beautiful work, just giving you a heads up. Okay, so we're going to erase all this. We'll move this value. All right, that's the mass we just found. And now what we need is the density of water will equal then the mass of the water divided by the volume of water. So to solve for volume, simply do a cross multiplication. It's m over the density. Right, and now we have kilograms on the top, so that's fine. We have then our value of the density in kilogram per cubic meter, so that's fine. Now the volume here is going to be then about divided by 1,000, so you can just move the decimal then three places on over to the left if you like, so 0 0.00967 cubic meters. Okay, now that would be the answer, all right. Uh, however, it might be better if we convert this into liters right, uh, so that um, so that we can kind of compare, right? We're talking about one liter of crude oil, and let's figure out how many liters then of, of water, although this is an answer. Um, all you have to simply do is then multiply this by 1,000, because that's the relate. There's 1,000 liters in a cubic uh, meter, 
and therefore we actually get back to kind of that number, right? 9.67, 9.67, and that is then in liters now. So if you notice, how many more times water, or I should say, I don't even know if that made sense, but how much more water relative to the, in terms of volume, right? Because it's always, whenever they say how much water, well, how much, what do you mean? Volume wise, right? Mass wise. So in terms of this, how much, in terms of volume, how much more water is needed in relation to crude oil? About 9.67 times more water, right? I mean, it's just a simple ratio, 9.67 divided by one. So we need nine and a half times, almost 10 times more water than we do um, oil to put out that particular fire. I mean, that's a lot. You're talking about a huge oil tanker, right? And then you're talking about 10 times whatever the amount of oil on that is. You're talking about 10 times now the amount of water we would need uh, to try to absorb the heat um, in that particular volume. So anyway, guys, hope this helped. All right, please remember to uh, help us out and hit that subscribe button. All right, we'd appreciate it so much. We really do uh, enjoy helping you, and we do hope that you enjoy learning, all right? It should be fun um, most of the time. I mean, sometimes it's kind of a little boring, let's be honest. <laughs> but uh, some, some of this should be fun, and uh, hopefully in the future, we're gonna try to create some interesting videos for you guys to show you how this stuff applies to actually real life, all right? So I hope to uh, see you in the next video. Well, talk to you in the next video at least. Take care.